July is over, so here are all the games I completed in July. The very first game that I completed in July was Fantasy Star 4 The End of the Millennium. This is a Genesis game. I played it on the Nintendo Switch Online. You play as Chaz, a guy who is being mentored by somebody, and you're learning the ways of like being a monster hunter slash, uh, you just are hunting in general just to learn what you need to do. And your first mission is go to Academy and stop whatever is going on in the Academy. You go to the basement only to find out that there's been like weird crap going on. Monsters are being, you know, harvested and you go and confront the principal only to find out that there's more going on than let on. And the principal doesn't care. He's like, man, eh, you dealt with it, whatever, let's go. And they're like, no, we're going to keep going. And so they keep traveling around the world and only to find out there's dark forces everywhere. And they have to stop the dark forces everywhere in the galaxy. It's not just their planet. And so they have to keep traveling in a spaceship. And you meet characters along the way like Ren and R Rika, I think is from like the first couple games. And so you battle everybody and... You have to defeat the dark forces and stop the world from becoming chaotic and, not only that, the galaxy itself. Um, I don't want to spoil anything, but it is an amazing story. I really enjoyed this RPG. It's a turn-based RPG, so if you're not into turn-based, it's not action. Yeah, I wouldn't recommend it, but if you do enjoy games that are lengthy and have a good story to them, you're going to definitely want this one. It has a beautiful soundtrack, it has amazing graphics for its time, and I really enjoyed this one. I had a great time with this. Next, I streamed and played a game called Open Roads. This is about a 16-year-old girl named Tess. They are going through the house because, sadly, the grandmother has passed away, and now they must sell the house because the grandmother, I guess, put a mortgage out on it. And so they're going through everything, and they get to the attic. And there is a hidden compartment in the attic and they open it up only to find out that there was a bunch of letters from a mystery guy who could be a potential father that was not their father growing up. So they go on a road trip to Canada and they start investigating to find out if that guy who they were writing to back and forth was really their father and what's going on with everything. It's a fun game. It's a and story driven narrative driven game so if you're not into those type of games might not be up your alley but i had a good time with it it was funny i really enjoyed the story the interaction between the mom and daughter while they were in the car you could do little stuff to make it like what is going to happen if you do this or what was going to be the interaction if it changes i liked it and if you are not sure it sometimes goes on sale so definitely wait for a sale on that one then I played a DLC that I've been trying to finish since it dropped in December of last year, and that is God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. This is a roguelike game, and I'm not really into roguelike games, so I'm proud of myself that I finished this one. And basically what it is, is you go to Valhalla, and you battle, and you're given loops, and you have to finish a loop, and then it goes to another cutscene. I don't know how far I was gone before I just dropped the game for a little bit because I got it, you know, was starting to rage and I was like, oh, I can't beat this game. So let me just put it away. And I didn't realize I was on the last loop. <laughs> so I was going through and all of a sudden I'm like, I'm really close to the end because there's different sections. You kind of learn the loops as you go through that. I was like, I'm really close to the end guy. I'm not going to spoil it, but the end guy is the final guy that you battle. Each loop will end with him. And he is very difficult. I had beefed myself up, bought all I could, I bought a resurrection, I bought all this other stuff to like help me along and I used all of it and I was down to like very little health at the very end. The ending is amazing for this DLC. It's free. If you have bought God of War Ragnarok, the Valhalla is free. The DLC is free. So definitely try it out. I mean, not everybody likes roguelite. Roguelite games are not for everybody, but this one I really enjoyed. I had a good time with it. And I'm proud of myself that I finally finished it. Then I moved on to an action RPG, and it's Tales of Arise. This is my very first Tales game I've ever played. I told myself I wanted to play a Tales game finally. It was on the bucket list. There's Tales, Trails, and Ease games, and another bunch of stuff. And I'm getting through all of them. I'm trying to get through as many as I can. And I played Tales of Arise, and it was on Game Pass. It's a fun action RPG. You start off as a gentleman who has a mask on his face and he goes by Iron Mask because he can't remember anything. 
and you find out later on that he is being forced to be in labor because the Renans are taking over the Danans and he's like, well, no, I'm going to stop this. And he meets up with another Renan who she doesn't care. And she's like, I'm going to just help everybody. And we're going to figure it out. And again, it's kind of like Fantasy Star 4. There is a dark force in the area. There's, you know, evil and you have to stop the evil that is forcing the Renans. You find out later that the Renans are actually being falsely, you know, told like this is how it works. And they are actually impressed that like, oh yeah, we found out that you are being oppressed and they're being oppressed and everybody's being oppressed. And it just keeps going on and on and on only to find out that there's just a dark force that is manipulating everybody. And so you have to use everybody, all the characters that you meet along the way to be able to battle. You get about four party members in total and they each, you can tell them what to do in the action RPG and you can pick whoever you want to be. Um, sometimes I was being one of the ranged characters because I couldn't figure it out. And sometimes I was being, you know, whoever I wanted to be like health wise or stuff like that, because the AI is kind of stupid. It's kind of like Resident Evil 5 where they just keep wasting and spamming their, their health bars. So you kind of, you have to tell them like, use it please don't use it as much as you think you're going to use it. Please just stop because you're wasting all the health and I have to get to the very end. And the very end battle is so long. It's really tedious. Um, I know action RPGs and turn-based RPGs have a very long battle at the very end, but this one is so long and it's so difficult and it was just so annoying. I Sometimes I was like raging and I was like, ugh. So if you ever get to the very end, level up as much as you can. Buy as much health as you can and just make sure that your AI is ready to go because if they waste it in the very end it will be a difficult thing. So yeah, I like Tales of Arise, it's just the AI was stupid. The next game that I finished was NBA Street. I have played and finished NBA Street throughout my life when I was younger because that's one of the games that I really enjoyed. And basically NBA Street is kind of like NBA Jam meets regular NBA games. And basically it's a three on three and you are in the streets and there is no technically rules. I mean, there is a couple rules like don't go out of bounds, the basic stuff. But if you hit somebody or foul them, you don't get a foul. It just keeps going. So you have to block, you have to get characters. So get a very tall character, get a character who can shoot three pointers and get a muscle character. And you have a stack of like craziness that nobody can battle. And I really enjoy this game. So if you have never played NBA Street, you have real characters in there that's like Michael Jordan. You have a bunch of stuff from back in the early 2000s of characters who are like, oh crap, I remember this guy on NBA. And you will be able to play as all the characters. That's why I said it's like NBA Jam and real NBA meshed together. And then you have characters who are kind of like the end boss people at the very end of, you'll play a circuit like a little section and then you'll battle them and they're like people that are really difficult they're like people that are overpowered on purpose and you have to keep going with them and then at the very end you battle michael jordan michael jordan is the ending and i really enjoyed this one i had a fun time with it and then when i first played that i never knew that it was going to be so because i had michael jordan on my team i always have michael jordan on my team but then you have to like okay well what character can i pick after that so definitely Get used to Michael Jordan because you'll learn what his pattern is and and then you'll be like, okay, I got this. I'm going to be able to battle him at the end. So definitely play this one. After that, I played a point and click game. Um, very, very short game. This is like 30 minutes or whatever. And it's a game that I found and somebody told me about and I was like, what the hell is this game? I like point and click games, but this is very, 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 very adult. Just FYI. It's 18 plus. It's not a game that... Yeah, anybody, don't even play it when you have kids. Like, make sure if you play this game, because I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it. If you know in the comments, let me know. It's a game that is very, very, like, triggering. You are a musician who is going through a bar, playing at the bar, and then he makes some bad choices, and you have to see what happens after that. But the game really, 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 like, showed me, like, wow, just... It's wild. That's all I have to say. It's just a wild game. Then I moved on to another turn-based RPG, and that is Octopath Traveler 2. This was on Game Pass, and I saw it, and I went, you know what? I haven't played an Octopath Traveler game, and I heard good things about this one. And basically, it's eight characters, and 
The only thing that I didn't like about this was they don't mesh together. A lot of the story is you each have their own story. And you can play all eight, and it's like eight RPGs in, in one, but I don't have the time for that. Like, that is a lot of time. So I played the Apothecary, and I stuck with that storyline, and I kept moving on the other storylines because I needed to level up. But the chapter three and four is so difficult, just FYI. It's a freaking monster. Like, the Apothecary's chapter two is just wild. Like... I couldn't get through it. I had to keep trying. I was trying different ways of like, maybe it's this pattern or maybe it's that. It's if, like, I kept getting destroyed. Like, I, I don't know what else to say other than you have to level up a lot for each chapter. And then I was like, well, on the map, it says you need to be recommended level da 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 da, like 40 something. There's no way I'm going to be able to level up to that level, so let me keep going on with the other characters that I have. Because I was the hunter, the beast character, I was the warrior from, I think it was from Japan, I can't tell because technically like the world is all connected. And then I played the merchant character, and every single time I would battle a boss, I would be like, oh, this is going to give me so much XP, it's going to be wild. And I would finish a boss and I'd be like, what's up with this xp <laughs> so the xp is all over the place you don't know what you're gonna get so i i just recommend just like leveling up as much as you can whatever they recommend for octopath traveler 2 double it like triple it like <laughs> just keep going so like if they say like 46 get like 48 49 50 like be way over level because i kept going and going and going and i just i i didn't even think i was gonna finish this game this game was very difficult and it was more difficult, to be honest, than some of the other RPGs I've played this year. I have just been like, oh yeah, I'm going to go through this. And, and I, I expect an ending that's going to be wild. And I'm going to expect an ending that's going to just destroy my spirit. But this was like one of those ones I'm like, I really don't know if I can fi finish this game. I don't know if I can finish it. I don't know what's going to happen. So just FYI, be prepared. Get as many as you can, like Final Fantasy Star 4. Build your characters up, make sure you learn as much as you can, and hopefully it goes through. But yeah, get the extra jobs, get the extra stuff to help you along. Then I played a game that I've been trying to finish for a long time. I would get only little, like maybe one or two levels, and then I would get destroyed as well. And that's Golden Axe 2. And I also played this on the Nintendo Switch Online Genesis app. It's a fun game. It's a hack and slash. It's basically the type of game where you have three types of characters. You are in a medieval setting and you basically have a character who's average, a character who's fast, and a character who is just beefy. I think I played, if I'm incorrect, let me know. I think I played the dwarf or the gnome character and you get an axe and you just, you go through, you destroy all the evil creatures and then at the end you go to a campsite and as you're sleeping, people are stealing your magic and different things like that. So you have to attack them and get your magic back each level. And you use magic to, it's like an overpowered, like, just destroys everything on the bosses and stuff like that. Had a good time with this game. I love hack and slash and beat em up games. So if you are uncertain about this one, definitely practice. You can get this in another one I can check off the bucket list. Then I moved to Game Pass again and I played Grid Legends. This is a game that is you're a rookie racer working your way up to the very top of the leaderboards and you have a team and it's FMV. I was really surprised by that. All the, the cutscenes, everything is FMV. You are having rival racers who are trying to take you out each race and they don't care because they want the popularity and the money. And you're just trying to learn the way of everybody, how they work, and trying to learn their racing styles and build your character up with every single type of vehicle because it's not just one type of vehicle. You have like multiple ways to race. You have trucks, cars, big rigs. I was surprised by the big rigs <laughs> and the little mini coopers. But yeah, you have different styles. So you have to learn how that vehicle moves and you have to each race it will say like you have to either finish before this guy or finish before, you know, top four or whatever in order to move on to the next part of the story. There's multiple stories. I only did the main story for Grid Legends because I really didn't want to keep going. But yeah, definitely fun. 
definitely try it out. I don't know if it's going to stay on Game Pass for a while, but it's been there for at least a month or two since I've had Game Pass. Then I played No More Heroes 3. It's also a hack and slash kind of game where you're Travis. The objective of the game is to defeat the evil forces. It's, I'm seeing a pattern here. You basically have aliens crash land onto the planet and you have to battle your way through, get all the bosses that the guy keeps throwing at you and knock them out and then take them and go through the next part. So every level you build up, you buy stuff, buy food, buy everything and you keep knocking them out. I enjoyed it because there was a level where you played musical chairs. <laughs> I was like this is ridiculous so you had to like learn and, and it was kind of like a rhythm game for five seconds and you were in Vegas and if you defeated the musical chair part then you got the next part but each monster was hilarious alien was just like all the aliens were funny as hell I had a good time with this one um I will say though it's bloody it's gory it's not for everybody it's just a game that I just loved to death but I was like oh my gosh <laughs> all this gore is just like taking everybody out is just wild so if you're not up to that don't eat when you're playing this game it's funny as hell but yeah don't recommend eating then i played a dlc that i've been wanting to play for a while and this can last for two hours if you are not sure what you're doing but it's called cowboys and critters and basically there is a trail that you take where you unlock a cooking class in this game and basically what your job is you go in you collect and gather food to feed three hungry cowboys who are taking all the cattle to another location so you start off in texas and you work your way to kansas it's not like how you're going from point a to point b you stop along the way and you have to gather fish you have to gather it's like berries, different things like that to keep yourselves fed and keep the cowboys fed. It's a very difficult thing because you also have to worry about the cattle because if you stop too many times, the cattle can either get lost or they could suffer if they don't have food to graze on. So you have to figure out what path is the best path. And I really enjoyed this one. I love Oregon Trail. If you ever played Oregon Trail, you know that it's very difficult and you can lose a lot of party members. I, at the very end, barely made it because I had everybody at the very end, no health, we're dirty, we're getting sick so much that I didn't know if I was going to make it because I was getting there. I was like, oh my gosh, like this could end badly because I had one character and I was just like, I'm just going to power through it. I'm not going to stop anywhere. Let's just go. Keep her happy. And sure enough, I made it on the stream and I did it. But yeah, thank you to the chat. You all made it hilarious. And I don't know how I did it. And the very last game that I finished for the month was Adventure on the Atari 2600. This is also a roguelike game. It is basically you have to learn the map and figure out what you're trying to take from point A to point B. You basically are given a task of find the golden cup or golden chalice and take it from one bad castle to a good castle. And you have dragons and a bat and if they get you you're dead or the bat I think keeps moving the chalice because every time I get hit by the bat it would just move it somewhere else so you have to keep looking around and there's mazes so you have to go in find something to open up the bad castle get the golden chalice and take it to the good castle so I Remember playing Haunted House and it's the same thing. You have to know the story in order to understand the game in general. So if you don't know what those old games are about, look up the manual and you will find it and go be like, oh, that's easy. Like all I have to do is just learn the map, figure out where the items are and take them to where they need to be. And I never played Adventure ever. And I was watching a couple people play games like Television Gamer and stuff like that. Like, the television dude was just, like, learning different things and, and was playing, like, Dungeons and & Dragons. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go back and there was a game on my bucket list that I want to play, and that is Adventure. I finished Haunted House. I want to play Adventure. So I booted it up. I have the Atari collection. And I took it and just went, okay, I'm going to play the Atari collection. I'm going to figure it out. And I got through it. 
It's a very fun game. It's just really, really difficult. You have to get weapons to stop the dragons. So learn the map first, let yourself get hit, then learn what you have to grab. And then from there, learn how to unlock everything. And then boom, you can beat an adventure game in literally like five minutes or less. I beat it once I learned everything in like two minutes and something seconds. And I was like, whoa, I did it. Nice. So learn the game. You will have fun and it will be a great time. And there you have it, everybody. I beat 12 games in total. So I am currently at 70 games beat. So what was your July like? Let me know in the comments below. Did you have a good month? Was there any games that you want to highlight? And if you're new, please consider subscribing. If you're rolling out, please give it a like before you go. And I'll catch you next video. Bye, everybody. She's here to amaze